This episode is brought to you by NordVPN. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash rogue. Sign up for two years and you get 66% off. That's like $3.99 for the fastest VPN I've ever experienced. It's all he ever talks about. I, 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 hello, oh, Jason? Huh. Hi. How you rocking that NordVPN, man? 24-7. Yeah. That's what I'm rocking it. If uh, there were so, 25, I, I, I would do it, that too. Is there a problem with your NordVPN, bud? It's so fast that it makes me dizzy, makes my head spin. I'm glad we had this conversation. I haven't been eating. Click. I, uh, I can't sleep at night. I'm just thinking about like, how safe I am. Oh, you're still here. That's I, adorable. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, still, I didn't know phones still work this way. I, I'm putting it on the handset because this is I, a landline. So I'll, I'll, I'll see you, see you in a bit. I didn't even know you had one. I, 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 I got to go, buddy. I got to go. I, 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 I got to go. Michael Keaton in The Founder, halfway through, he becomes what? The Vulture, Batman, or Birdman? What do you go for? <sighs> you right? got to go with Batman. That's the way it comes. <laughs> Well, I don't want... There's no option for that. <laughs> Take your burger. He, he turns around, he's just like, would you like cheese on that? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. That, 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 that weird halo thing that he's got. <laughs> yeah. Then they tell you, I was like, uh, could you go pull around up front? What? Oh, man, they got to take my order. <laughs> pull around up front, you park. And then he lands on the hood a few minutes later. Like, boom. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Cooking a really good burg. Ken Shoberly of Augustus Ranch, you talked before about the fundamentals when it comes to steak. You want that crispy outside, you want mm -hmm. that uh, medium rare inside, mm -hmm. uh, you want to soak it in fat, you want to throw butcher salt all over it. What rules are different when it comes to doing a burger? In my opinion, you should have something amazingly delicious with just the meat and the bun. If you can make the meat and the bun taste amazing, right? And that has to do with the quality of the meat, how you cook it, and then the ratio between the meat and the bun. So the textures become one. They're not separate. When you're eating it, it just becomes this holistic experience. A unified burger, so to speak. You're talking about a religious experience. Almost. Fundamentals. Let's Fundamentals. talk about good, I, I assume, uh, good meat, good cheese, good buns, right? Exactly. Those three things, uh, should be delicious. Everything you add on after that, the condiments, um, we're talking about the addition of flavors and textures, salt, fat, acid, heat, sweet, umami, all of those encapsulated within the burger. But meat, cheese, bun, you should have something incredible to start. What do we look for if we wanted to handcraft? Because most of us buy pre-ground meat, uh, pre-packaged buns and all that stuff. Sure. If, if, if you want to make a presentation of this, where do you begin? Right, take it to the next level. Well, arguably the most important part of the burger, the meat. You would say that. I would. I'm meat. a meat guy. Meat purveyor. Big for meat. sure. <laughs> Big meat. That's, a, that's our nickname for you now. <laughs> I'll take Big it. Big meat. Yeah. Showberly. Show Buns was actually my Show nickname. Uh, it's my last name, Showberly. Yes. Like Magic Mike. No. <laughs> but with meat buns. But with meat. Yeah. No, that was Show Buns. Yeah. Plus, I used to cook with an apron and nothing else. So I guess that was probably. Yeah. Don't know if you're serious or not. Uh, but, uh, you know what? Uh, Moving right along. Moving on. <laughs> I have here three different specific parts of a cow, which okay. we're going to use to grind our own fresh meat. Okay. Now, look, if you're at home, you don't have access to a grinder, just get some pre-ground meat from a source that you trust, either right. from a local butcher shop or better yet, directly from the ranch that raises the meat. I operated under the misconception for the longest time that you really couldn't tell any difference between the type of meat, between the quality of meat and mm -hmm. where it was farmed and things like that. You know what, if we did a blind taste test, we all sat down, put blindfolds on, and we had just the meat by itself, you would be able to tell the difference. If we ate a cheeseburger with everything on it, it'd be a little bit harder to taste the nuances of texture and flavor when you've got all the other stuff going on, the condiments, the pickles, the onions, but it does make a difference, especially um, you know if you're using a bigger patty, right? Not those tiny, tiny patties. Mm -hmm. I don't go any less than a quarter pound, sometimes maybe even a little closer to a third of a pound. Also, uh, you know, conceptually, you're thinking about if you know where it comes from, you know it comes from a good source, yeah. you can uh, feel good about eating that cheeseburger. What are the three types of meat that we see here. We've got the chuck. Chuck comes from the shoulder region of the animal. Does a lot of work, okay? So it's got a lot of flavor. It's got some connective tissue, so grinding it is perfect because it kind of tenderizes it. Perfect base for your burger grinds, chuck. Next, we've got some ribs. 
The ribs are unctuous and delicious. They've got a strong flavor because of the amount of fat in there. So the ribs are really gonna help take the fat up to the next level. They're boneless. I cut them off the bone of the rib bone, but they come from the rib section. Third, we've got some sirloin. Specifically, it's tri-tip. Tri-tip comes from the bottom sirloin, and the reason I like that is because it's a little bit softer in texture, but it's got great flavor. Those three are an amazing place to start for a custom grind. Do you blend all three of these together? About to or, or, or do you have different types of burgers from them? You can let your imagination go wild, and you can definitely do different combinations, um, different size uh, grinding plates. Maybe you grind it twice, maybe you only grind it once. These are all variables on the table. I prefer to go with them once ground through the medium sized plate. Uh, I find that gives a good combination of that kind of burger texture that you're looking for. At the same time, it's still kind of meaty. It's so weird because a meat grinder is something I only know from horror films. So, so it's, <laughs> it's weird to be here in person. Right. This is a fancy device. You can get basic ones at, at, at any store that don't Absolutely. set you back very much. Look, if you, do you can get a meat grinder for home purposes for less than 100 bucks. It's going to do a good job. Uh, you can even get attachments for your KitchenAid mixer, if you have a KitchenAid mixer. Sure. Uh, that's a great way to go. I do a little bit more than just the occasional grinding. I like to grind all kinds of stuff, you know? You can get really uh, fun with it. Bacon and beef or um, pork and vegetables or any or homemade burgers. Having a grinder at home is just, it's fun. It gives you a little more flexibility. I prefer a standalone unit because it's gonna be a little stronger. I wanna say this Cabela's grinder costs between 100 to 200 dollars. This is oh. one of their smaller size units. It's phenomenal. It's it fantastic. Looks, uh, formidable. It's heavy. Like, it's like 70 pounds. Like, so you'll notice I actually cut it into strips. Okay, um, you can cut it into chunks, but I like strips. I find that it gets a little bit of a cleaner grind. Imagine a blade inside this plate spinning. It's actually cutting the meat. It's not smashing or pulverizing. It's actually cutting the meat. So giving it this continuous strip. Um, I believe creates a little bit of a cleaner grind on the sure. actual meat. So we're gonna put this in our handy tray up top here. So we can put three different types. We've got our chuck, rib. So we're just blending them together in this case. Yeah, we'll yeah. go, we'll, we'll alternate between strips kind of thing. Now, were these all sourced from the same cow? These were, these came from an Augustus Ranch cow I, uh, that I butchered on Friday. Freshness is, 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 is a kind of nuanced subject. Talked sure. about aging, yeah. like after the slaughtering, you want the steaks to hang around a little bit and then right. uh, get a little bit soft with that, that natural. Right. right, dry age. Yeah, so exactly. You're yeah. bringing us meat from yes. a cow that you slaughtered less than 48 hours no, ago. No, the cow was actually slaughtered, um, it would be probably at this point 18 days ago. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. gotcha. So it was aging. Killed. aging. Right. Right, right, right. Hung the carcass for 15 days and uh, got that two weeks of dry age on it and then butchered it on Friday. And what I normally would have done is put it into a vacuum sealed package and froze it. And then we sell these cuts of meat. Um, but I, I held on to it, so we have it here. So I'm gonna turn this on and literally Dude. all you're gonna do is feed a strip at a time. There's three all piles right. here. So just alternate. Don't even worry too much about it. It's just okay. gonna be perfect. And then just go ahead and drop it down into the hole. Yep, and just keep going with the other strips. Oh, it's happening, it's happening. This uh, keep going, uh, play -Doh. Keep going. Oh, okay, okay. Keep going. This is now, fun. Not, not one of the ribs. You weren't kidding. This is a good time. No, 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 back to the chuck, okay. then the sirloin, then the rib, just keep on alternating Oh yeah, because like we, gotta, we gotta mix it right. Yep. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, little biscuit. This is what happens. Just don't stick your hands too far down into the, uh, into the grinder hole there. Yeah, that looks like it would end badly for me. It's not gonna feel good. So you can see the meat coming out. It's coming out nice and clean. So there are different types of guards on the outside that, that determine the size of the uh, meat tubes. This is all science talk I'm yeah, trying to put out there. Absolutely, very technical. Um, there's different size plates. Yeah. So you can't see it right now because the meat's coming out of it, but the, basically the plate where the meat's coming out, there's different size holes. Yeah. And that'll determine the size of the meat particle that goes into our ground beef. This is just like Play-Doh. Uh, you mean the, the Republic? No. The Philosophers? Yeah, sorry. Yep, that's what I was thinking. That's, that's, how they, that's what they did with him. That's how he Actually, died. Yeah. Everyone ate him. 
<laughs> You've also got this meat plunger, so you can use this to kind of help the meat through. But as you saw, we had it in strips and we just fed it one at a time. We're not trying to smash the meat through, right? right. We don't want to smash it or pulverize it. We literally want to cut it as if we took those strips with a sharp knife and hand cut them into these tiny little particle sizes. Got it. So, so, so you want to preserve the integrity of That's the right. meat. That's right. What's next? Well, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator, let this cool down, and then we'll dive into our condiments and kind of figure out where we're gonna go from there. Right oh, on. okay. Just keep that nice and cold. Do you want the freezer or the fridge? Just the fridge, just the fridge. Okay, so the meat is chilling right now. Correct. Is the chilling important for the style of cooking? Is there a reason that we don't want to immediately throw it onto a pan? Really, it's just for timing purposes. Um, we're gonna go ahead and assemble all our elements before we actually start cooking the burgers. This is one of those things I never would have thought of uh, because uh, uh, now that you're saying it, it's like, of course, you know, it's like there, there's a timing element to get the perfect amount of, you well, know, nobody likes a burger that's been sitting around for five hours, right? right? Well, and, and honestly, that's something that as I learned to cook. This is just kind of basic information, but it really is all in the timing. Like, okay, I've got five minutes. Right. I'm going to go over here and do this now while this is happening. And it's really just kind of keeping all of those plates spinning. You know, there's the term mise en place that uh, professional cooks use. It's basically having all the different components of your dish ready at your disposal. So at the moment of cooking, you don't have to think, you don't have to be distracted. You've got everything you need. We've got all our condiments here that we're going to separate out, have those all ready. It's gonna go boom, 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 quick. Assemble the burgers, they'll be ready hot and fresh. Okay, little exercise. I'll go first. Yes. Sure. Oh, are we gonna have this talk? We are. Are we, we gonna are. talk about condiment? Uh, yes. No. Uh, no, 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 yeah, no, sure. no. I'm open to it. I don't know what's going on with nope. that. Nope. Everybody's, okay, butterfly. Uh, everybody's different when it comes to condiments, right? There's something about the ownership of you being able to decide your own how much of what goes on in there. And meanwhile, we have different flavor profiles. You know, mayonnaise is so tangy. Uh, what, uh, sweet relish is, is so gross. But here's the choice you get to make, Brian. Kosher dill or spicy kosher dill? I mean, if I'm gonna pick anything, it's gonna be the spicy one, but meanwhile, no pickles. Like, like, <laughs> like, no like pickles that's, that's where I'm at. I'm at. Yeah. All right, I trust you. Rock the house, man. Put Dude. it in my mouth. Let's do it. Well, that's the thing about cheeseburgers. You can really make it your own. Everyone's got their own little preferences. But to your point, if you like things simple, the burger should be delicious with nothing more than meat, bun, and cheese. I mean, really, if you've got mm -hmm. the right the right bun, um, a nice soft bun, which toasts well, you've got the quality of the meat, which has a good flavor. Um, for us, we just ground our own, our own meat, so it's gonna be nice and fresh and beefy. The cheese that we have, I've actually got a combination of two different types of cheddar. So we can really go any direction we want. We've got like, is this beef tallow? Is this lard? What is this? That is beef tallow. That is beef tallow made with suet, which is the kidney fat from the beef, right? So it's rendered. We talked a little bit about rendering on the last episode. It doesn't have anything to do with your uh, computer or your, your graphics sure. processor, but this is basically rendered beef fat and we're gonna essentially fry the burgers. So we're frying a burger yeah. in burger. In, in burger. Yeah, Why would no, you that's not great. do uh, that? Uh, Burgerception, let's yeah. do this. Uh, uh, yeah. Fire it up. First thing we gotta do is those is, is, is prepare our condiments, okay? okay? We're getting into the sauce portion of things. For me, the perfect burger sauce has all of the elements. It's got the mayo because that's a great base. The fat really like brings all the other ingredients to another level. We've got the ketchup that kind of adds a little bit of a sweetness and a little acid. We've got the mustard, which is, you know, got vinegar, a little bit of heat and spice and then the sweet relish, which adds another little dimension of so like a- We're gonna blend all these together to make like just just, just one paste? Well, well yeah. again, uh, Kent is uh, kind of recapturing his experience with the Big Mac. So yep. this is gonna be kind of similar to the exactly. special sauce. Exactly, right? the very first cheeseburger I had, not the very first, the most memorable one. I was at the rec park playing with my friend Jeremy Estes. Must have been six or seven years old. My dad, brings us a couple burgers, sits us down at a picnic table, and puts these boxes in front of us, all right? It's like a brown box. It opens up and inside is this perfectly shaped, you know, bun, are, round. Are you describing a Whopper? Big Mac, Big yeah. Mac. Okay. Different, but I literally remember every single part of that moment from the moment I put it into my mouth and I tasted the crunch from the lettuce and the tangy sauce and the bite from the onion and the flavor of the meat and the melty cheese and the soft bun, which just gently held it all together. 
every moment in my life past that experience has been to recreate that. Uh, that, uh, that was a real tender moment. My uh, dad just said, here's a pack of smokes, I'll see you around. <laughs> it's like a tangy burger sauce that has everything in it. Um, and then finally we'll add a little dash of rice vinegar just for that acid, bring the ingredients to another level. So there's no measurements. Look, when you're at home doing this stuff, unless you're baking, you're making your own buns and you're doing something that requires that level of detail, this is all by eye, okay? You just, you gotta get used to doing it like that. That's, mm, the, that's, right. the, best, that's the best way. It should be fun. It should, it should be a joy in cooking. You don't need to stress. As I've come to understand it, when you get into the groove with cooking, you start to understand that it's kind of like jazz almost. So first of all, I know some people are like on the fence about mayo, but like really, if you don't like mayo, I don't know if you're that trustworthy as a person, but I only recently came around to mayo. Brian, on the other hand, is a, a, a monster. Look, everything's gonna be mixed together, so you're not even gonna really know what is in the sauce. You're just gonna know it's kinda like, it's kinda like tangy. Tangy, Enhanced. savory, sweet, exactly. a little bit salty, just adds zest. Boom. Yeah, yeah okay, exactly. all right. So, I'm a hippie, so I like using better quality condiments. Um, this is made with avocado oil. This is mayo with avocado oil. Whoa. Yeah. The avocado actually does have a little bit of flavor. It's fantastic. So um, we're gonna do this like so. I'm gonna do three parts mayo. If this is grossing you out, just turn away for it's a fine. moment. It's fine, it's fine. I can handle all of this. Okay. <laughs> we got ketchup. What? Oh, oh, it's the same brand. Okay. Yeah, this Sir is the same brand. Sir Kensington's. This is another one of those okay. like hippie ketchups. We're gonna do, you know, three parts mayo, one part ketchup. Right. One part mustard. I go a little heavy on the mustard because I love mustard. Mm -hmm. So okay with one the mustard. part mustard. And then one part sweet relish, just because the sweetness it adds just kind of See, Very nice. That's what throws me because I always just think, oh, sweet relish is a topping, right? Rather than an ingredient. But uh, I can see where you're going with it. And that's, right. Uh, I'm excited. Right. Finally, just a dash of uh, rice vinegar to add that extra acid and uh, make it a little tangy. So this is yeah. literally like a teaspoon. If you put mayo, mustard, ketchup, relish on the burger, like, as it's, you know, separately, that's just basically what this is. Sure. And your experience with a food is in the presentation, so if you get those as- Stir as, that up. If you sure, get those, I'll, <laughs> just, I'll just stir this up. If you, get these, <laughs> if you get these as separate toppings, rather than it's just the uh, sauce, that's yeah. gonna be a different experience. I mean, it probably will. Yum. Yeah, it depends on how much you put, it's you uh, know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you only cover half it with ketchup and the other half with something else. Mm -hmm. So you mix it all together, you get all of it in the, should I have given that to him? And whenever you see the, the special sauce on burgers, it often yeah. looks like yeah, that. Exactly. And a lot of times it's often just Thousand, Thousand Island. Island dressing. Yeah, Thousand yeah. Island, boom. <laughs> <laughs> right, nice I love texture, how he just huh? kind of, this from Brian just kind of said, happy now? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys would like to try it, you do the taste test. You stick yep. your- Yep, uh, yep. Ah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Tangy, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit sweet from the ketchup. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you did a magic trick. It's yeah. like you put in four things I hate and somehow I hated it not well, as much as I thought I would. And okay. here's the thing, that's gonna taste very different when we put it on the burger. Very right true. now sure. for me, that's a little intense. So that'll go on the top and the bottom bun. Okay. Both. Next, we've got our pickles, okay? I like fermented pickles. The fermented nature of the pickles adds that kind of funky, mm -hmm. salty, the bacteria from the fermentation, lactobacillus bacteria, um, it's gonna help with your digestion and just cut through the richness of all of those ingredients. You've also got non-fermented, which are more of like vinegar-based. You've got bread and butter, which are vinegar-based but have sugar. You can go any which way with the pickles, but the spicy ones, that's probably what I'm gonna go with today. They're not overly spicy, but just a little bit, the flavor of the pepper, the jalapeno, really just kind of adds to the whole I thing. I mean, you know my answer. It's gotta be the spicy. Yeah, right? spicy. Yeah. I'm down with spicy. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna take the pickle. Oh my God, I can smell it from here. You do Taste not it. Taste like it. pickles. Correct, I do oh, not Oh, you like don't like pickles. pickles. No, okay. no, no, but, 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 but look, I'm in, I'm learning. I'm trying, just, I'm just trying try, to try, try a piece. Uh, okay. <laughs> So imagine this in the context of that fatty, rich burger that we're eating. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna help cut through all that richness. I are can't you, wait. You, oh. This is gonna be great. You are a champion. You're converting. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I'm legit excited. <laughs> so we're gonna cut these maybe medium thickness so that we can put them on our burger. <laughs> so we got our pickles. 
Onion, okay? The sharp bite from the onion, mm -hmm. you know? Don't worry about your breath. It's gonna be fine. Cooked or raw? Both. Oh, oh. oh, You've got yellow onion, you've got white onion. Use whatever onion you like. I like red onions, you know? I like the flavor of red onions. So we're gonna slice some of these up. We're gonna put a few of these on raw. And then we're also gonna throw a few of these in the uh, in the burger grease. Okay. All right? Ooh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's gonna kind of caramelize a little bit. It's gonna get a little bit sweeter, but it's gonna have that oniony crunch and texture as well. I'm interested to see how much you put on there. Like, is it the little rings? Is it a disc of onion? Is it little pieces? Well, I will show you, sir. So we're gonna basically cut the onion, both ends, the root end and the uh, the top end, and then we're gonna slice it in half. I'm gonna take off the outermost layer here. You ever get a piece of onion? It's got that like papery thing going on. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's the outer layer. You want to take that off. Got him. Take that big onion. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna slice this fairly thinly because you know when you taste the onion, you don't want it to be extremely overwhelming. You just want it to accent the other ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and I sliced it once and I'm gonna go ahead and slice it one more time down the middle. So we've got these small, thin pieces of onion. So right. you're not gonna bite into this huge chunk of onion and sure. it's gonna be overwhelming. Next, lettuce, iceberg lettuce. As far as I'm concerned, is one of the greatest inventions of the last century. Name, name another ice, uh, uh, iceberg. Sorry, besides lettuce. Another Sorry. iceberg? No, besides another lettuce? lettuce besides iceberg. It's like you got me, Brian. I can't, uh, can't name any other iceberg. <laughs> iceberg lettuce is so good because it has that crunch. We're moving away from flavor profiles and talking about mouthfeel. Right. Now, this does have a little bit of a flavor to it. You know, it tastes like the garden a little bit. But um, we're going to slice this, basically shred it. I like it nice and thin. Okay. We'll put this on the bottom of the bun. I'm going to take the very top leaf off. And we're not going to need this whole thing. So what I'm going to do is just slice it in half like so. So you can see the crunchiest parts are in the interior. And then as we get towards the outer part of the iceberg, it starts to get a little bit more green and leafy. So I'll use a combination of all of that. But the best, most crunchiest part is from the heart. It's from the interior. Right so. on. That's what my sensei always told me. What did he tell you? That the crunchiest part is the heart. <laughs> oh, okay. Sometimes so, you throw something out there and it yeah. just kind of drifts away. <laughs> I was trying to find somewhere kind of to go away. with it. Sometimes but. your friends are able to help you, sometimes they're not. Understood. So I'm gonna slice this fairly thin. We've got our iceberg, we're gonna kind of break that up a little bit. So you're a fan of everything being sort of shredded almost like a cabbage or whatever, where yes. instead of instead of just a leaf of a single bit. Yes, sir. A leaf is great too. If you wanna peel off a leaf, especially one of the more interior leaves and, and do it whole like that, that's great. But for me, I like it shredded. So last thing we're gonna do before we start cooking the burgers is we're gonna melt our cheese. Wait, you melt it in advance? Yes, I like using real cheese. We're not talking about like a unified whey protein. We're talking about like a traditional cheese. Yeah, we're talking about like an actual aged cheddar cheese. Look, I'm not dogging American cheese. It's great. If that's your go-to cheese, go for it. The way that American cheese melts is spectacular, which is why we're going to take our shredded cheddar and we're going to add a little bit of water and a special salt that comes from citric acid. It's called sodium uh, citrate. You can read more about that on uh, Modernist Cuisine. That's where I found out about it. This stuff, what, dissolves the cheese and makes it more like American cheese? Exactly. It's going to give it the melting qualities of American cheese, but huh. it's uh, the flavor and the integrity of real cheese. Some cheese science. Maybe. Cheesy. I mean, look, if you got sliced cheese or sliced cheddar, that's that's great too. It's mm -hmm. just that whole melting down the sides sure. thing and you bite into it. It's like, it's one of the best parts. We're gonna take our fancy induction burner. We're gonna put our small pot, or uh, in this case, a deep nine pan on our induction burner. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'm gonna turn it down to a low power level. Half a cup water. I'm adding 14 grams, okay? 14 grams of the sodium citrate. Now this is not citric acid, it's a salt made from citric acid. We're basically gonna bring this up to a simmer. We're gonna start adding the cheese. I have 200 grams of a kind of mild cheddar cheese, and I've got 180 grams of is it looks like a mozzarella there? Or? No, this is actually, so cheddar is not actually yellow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by default, 
The yellow coloring comes from Anato. It's like a, uh, a tropical fruit, I believe. They, they make a pulp out of it and somehow that's where the, the yellow flavor and cheddar comes. Naturally, you know, if you ever see yellow milk coming out of a cow, you might want to ask some questions. I don't know. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. This is a uh, 30 month age cheddar. So this is going to be a little bit more funky and this is going to be a little bit more mild. I like combining the two for the flavor profile. You can use the whisk, sir. I'm just going to start adding the cheese. Okay. Just keep on doing what you're doing. So we're making kind of a cheese sauce. Yeah, yeah. You could make this sauce and then pour it out on a tray and refrigerate it, right? Or just drink it straight, or I would imagine. Or just drink it, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to take the extra step, you can make the sauce, pour it out on a flat tray, refrigerate it, and then cut it into slices. So you're gonna basically have your own American cheese. It's starting to get kind of thick, so just keep stirring. Yeah, it's- uh, I know, I know. It's I'm gonna getting... be sore tomorrow. God, your arms <laughs> are huge. This is the biggest workout you've done in a while. Look at these gains. <laughs> I got some massive cheese gains from this, guys. Diet. This is not the easiest job here, you know what I'm saying? Really this is... not. All right, so raid. this is a little thick, so I'm actually gonna add just a tiny bit more of cold water, but you can start to see it's starting to get that kind of melty, yeah, sure. cheesy. It's starting to look like that movie theater uh, nacho cheese sauce. Yep, <laughs> just a tiny bit. We're starting to get into that ooey gooey American cheese melting qualities that we're looking for. So we melted our cheese, they were letting that cool. We're gonna heat that up right before we put it on top of the burgers. I'm gonna turn the oven on because we're gonna throw the buns in there under the broiler. So we don't burn our buns. So we have the chilled meat, we have all the condiments, we're ready, uh, I, I, uh, what, what, what is next? You can cook burgers a variety of different ways. You can cook them on a griddle, you can cook them on a grill, you can even broil them in the oven. We're going to basically fry them in beef fat. Yeah. Because why would you not do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm in 100% in. Yeah. There is a place in Tennessee uh, known for doing this. They've been frying their burgers in grease for like 100 years, and they claim that at the end of every night they do strain the grease, but they've never uh, changed it. So it's. So there's some amount of the original beef tallow that's been used yeah. for uh, thousands of years. Well, I that assume. just makes me think yeah. of them reusing the same culture for beer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or, right. or, or yeast or culture. Yeah. Or, yeah, of course, or, of course. Um, what I like about doing this is that it kind of like fries the outside and gets the edges really crispy. And I mean, it's just like beef on beef flavor. Cooks really quickly. I've got beef tallow, so we're gonna get this melting. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our induction burner. I've got my thermometer here. We're basically wanting about 375 degree temperature. Okay. If I were to put a little bit of beef tallow on a spoon, yeah. could Brian eat it? Of course. Absolutely. Just checking. I mean, I'd let it cool down a little bit, but this is 100% beautiful edible fat that you can... You, I know that. exactly what you want me to do. Yes! Wow. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I did not see that coming. You, no, because I totally did. Um, oh, never let me down. The hell is it? This is a great episode. Yeah, I would, I would, I mean, look, it's, yeah, no, it's you nothing. Need to, you need to get rid of that? <laughs> there, there. I, wow, you went oh, for it, man. Jesus. That was uh, awesome. You really went for it. Now, how'd you swallow that? Unless you were like oh. used to eating a lot of fat, you'd probably be shitting your pants. Good, in good minutes. thing I didn't swallow it then. So. Uh, but now you're just primed. Now you're perfect. So, kidney wow. fat. So, we're melting that. We've got the oven on broil, all right? We're gonna stick our buns in there and we're going to toast them. Have you seen Braveheart? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know that part where he's like, every, every man, man dies, dies, but not every man truly lives. Okay? okay. If you're not buttering and toasting your buns. Yeah, then you've not lived. You're basically surviving. You need to butter and toast your buns for the love of God, please. <laughs> That's right on. Repent. <laughs> That's right, yeah, Again. right. <laughs> I'm gonna melt this butter for just like, however long it Microwave. takes. Microwave. Now he's talking my language. <laughs> so we are brushing melted butter onto these. Okay, we didn't really talk about buns too much, did we? No. A nice soft bun is key because it'll toast on the outside and get kind of crunchy, but the interior will be kind of fluffy and moist and soft, so it's not gonna fight yeah. the burger. Everything's gonna tie together gently, right? but securely. Anything to look for in particular when you're selecting uh, buns? Just something that's on the softer side. So these are brioche buns. It means they've got eggs, a lot of butter, 
and we're adding more butter. You can also go for a roll, you can go for a potato bun, you can go for, I mean, look, as long as it's kind of soft and fluffy on the interior, that's what I would say. We've got our buns. We're heating up our oil to about 375. This is beef fat. Yep. It's not Crisco, right. it's not vegetable oil. Use the real thing. Lard, beef fat, duck fat, chicken fat, you know, like fat in its most simple form. Got it. Next, we're just gonna make little balls. Like a meatball? Yep, like a meatball. Ooh, this is so soft and silky. We're making a ball about that size, okay? okay? We're gonna press these down into little burger patties and we're gonna stick them in the fat they're gonna fry. We wanna pay attention to the amount of meat and the size of the bun. I want the meat to basically be about the same circumference as the bun. So that means we're gonna have to make the patties a little bit bigger than the bun because they're gonna shrink a little bit when we cook them, ah, right? Okay. As the fat cooks so and renders out. this is out. one of those things I always associated like, uh, you know, the home homemade burgers oftentimes were more like meat balls with bread on top and the bottom. Whereas yeah. you go to a, a fast food joint and they were always these super thin patties. Right. You're saying reject the super thin patties but instead embrace the giant meatball thing? No, I'm saying somewhere in the middle. We're gonna smash this down into a thin patty. Okay. But you, you know, we're just making the balls first. Frankly, I don't like it when I get like this thick patty in the middle of my burger. Yeah. I like it a little thinner because I, wa I don't want it to fight everything else in the burger. I want it to all work together in one kind of harmonious texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down like so, okay. I mean, that seems gigantic. It seems big, but fat's gonna kind of cook and render out of this, and so it's gonna shrink up a little bit. What is it you're using to smash that? Is this that is like... just a flat piece of metal I okay. have that just makes it really easy to smash these burger down. Okay. So look, these are handmade patties. The uneven edges, that's great. The oil's gonna kind of fry the edges of these things, and it's gonna get all crispy. It's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna wash I'm gonna my wash hands. wash my hands that yes. are covered in just fat. Even though this is nice, clean, fresh meat, nobody's gonna get sick. All right, so I'm just heating this up a little bit. We're gonna use this right before we serve. We can probably put this back in the fridge. Okay. We're done using that for now. Got it. We've got everything assembled. We've got our lettuce, our onions, our pickles, our sauce, our cheese is over there on the stove. We've got our patties. We've got our butter buns. These are gonna go into the oven on a low broil to toast. I'm gonna test the temperature of the oil. We're looking for about 375. So I'm basically holding so it, it says, there. So it says 315, 320. 325. So it's getting there. It's getting there. Safety tip, you're cooking with fat, you're frying, something goes wrong, flames appear. Uh, the easiest way to ruin your life is to throw water on it. It's bad news. It's it makes it worse. Extraordinarily dangerous. Yeah. yeah. You just want to cover it. Something catches on fire, put a cover on it, put a lid, uh, try to remove the oxygen. Just The long and the short of it is don't put water on a grease fire. Yeah. Do not. How done is done when it comes to a burger? I want to leave a little bit of pink in the middle, okay? These are thin patties, so they're going to cook almost all the way through, but a little bit of red, a little bit of pink in the middle, it's great. Okay. If you want to take it more, take it more, that's fine. I mean, if you want a nice rare burger, you definitely want to make your patties a little bit thicker. Sure. But uh, for us, we're really just after the flavor and the texture of the meat, and it's gonna be so juicy yeah. no matter what. One of my favorite ways to cook a burger too is like, if you've got a griddle, especially, I've got one in my backyard, it's like a big hot griddle. You take that ball and you smash it down on the griddle. On the griddle. Yeah, you get that beautiful crust underneath, and then you wanna take a really fine, sharp spatula and scrape up that crust and flip it, mm -hmm. keep all of that golden brown crust intact. That's like a smashed burger. Those have become really popular. So. I'm gonna put these burger patties into the 375 degree beef fat. We've got our buns toasted in the oven. Those are almost ready. You can smell that toasty butter. Yeah. How do you know when the, the buns are toasted? The buns will visually have that kind of golden brown, crunchy, toasty look, but not black. Got it. That's it. All right, we're ready to go. Gonna put that into the nice hot oil. Let that do its thing. I can't really fit the other patty, so we'll just save that for for now. So we're looking for almost like a chicken fried steak kind of browning. Yeah, on. exactly. Yeah, probably He's... about 30, 45 seconds per side. Oh wow! So yeah. really quick. I mean, this cooks quick. You can see it's basically frying, yeah. frying in the in the beef fat. I'm so. amazed because everything that you've done so far, yeah. I thought, oh. 
I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which is never something I expect to say when standing in any kitchen. Buns are looking good. Oh yeah, they're feeling perfectly toasty. So we're gonna take these guys out, put those right there. So we've got our bottom buns, we've got our top buns. So Jason, why don't you take some of this sauce? Okay. About that much on all the buns. Trusting. All, all and of trusting, them, bottoms and trusting and, and Kent okay. for all of this. this okay. is that's our, that's our burger special bag. sauce. I, I'm proud of you, man. It's our burger special sauce. So Do you need some miracle food this. pills to yeah. case? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to very gently. Yeah, it seems like flipping them over would be problematic in that it would splash hot oil all yeah, over Yeah, you the definitely place. don't want to do that. So we're gonna flip it over. Okay, we're gonna flip them over really, whoops, gently. Falls apart a little bit, it's all right. Just keep it together. Will they refuse as they sit there frying by each other? I don't think so. This is just kind of loose. We yeah. ground it once. It's really fresh. Had we left it in the refrigerator no overnight, it probably would have like held together a little, a little bit more. I'm gonna turn the cheese on low here just to heat this back up. So you're really not doing anything uh, along the lines of spicing the meat. That's not something really. that I was expecting. No, we're gonna put salt on it when it comes out of the pan. That's about it. I'm gonna put maybe four pieces. Like I said, I want some of the flavor and the uh, sharpness and crunch from the raw onions. And then we're gonna put lechuga, just lettuce in Spanish. I'm gonna put some of that lettuce on the bottom here. I always thought uh, lettuce was an on top ingredient. How dare I guess, you, I, sir? Well, I, and is, is, the, is that a whole thing? Is there arguments about like... Is it like toilet paper? Yeah. I like the lettuce on the bottom so the meat rests on top and the lettuce kind of catches the juices a little bit. It's just like a perfect way to rest the meat, I find. Oh yeah, our burgers are done. I'm gonna flip it one more time. So the oil wasn't in, the oil wasn't quite hot enough, so we didn't get as much of the crispy crunchy. We'll mm. turn it up for the next one. Sure. But it's still super juicy, so we're gonna go ahead Put this right on top, mm. like so. Drain some of that grease there. Boom. Okay. So we haven't salted the burgers yet. So the salting, I assume that if you were to mix it in with the ground beef, that it would be, you know, basically making it a briny flavor. This is a case where you're gonna put it on the outside so that it hits those taste buds, right? Exactly, yeah. I think it would actually not do too good if we mix the salt into the actual patty. It would right. start drawing the moisture out of the meat. Oh, I think it might, yeah. might change it up a little bit. That's a little hot, because <laughs> I had it on the stove. So we're gonna take our spoon, and we're gonna basically ladle this cheese sauce over the top, kind of like so. Now, it's gonna be really easy to overdo it with the cheese here, so I'm not going to. It almost got weird. Yeah. I almost started going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Kind of evokes those emotions, huh? So it really it's does. got this super queso-y, melty quality to it. Next, we're gonna do pickles, like so. Maybe just four pickles per burger. These are the spicy ones again, right? That's what These we did? These are the spicy pickles. They've okay. got a little bit of jalapeno. Holy cow. We've got two cheeseburgers here, red onions, pickle, lettuce, uh, fried meat. Those are right at eating temperature there, so. Dude, moment of truth. Oh. I'm so excited. I'm I, so I'm, excited. I am, uh, uh, You're nervous, I, I know, yes, it's fine. I am, I am, fine. I am. I'm proud of you for coming this Complete far. with the pickles and everything. Oh. Pickles, onions, cheese, lettuce, burger, brioche bun. Oh, sweet Christmas. I mean, oh my God. Even knowing that there are so many ingredients here that I don't normally do, something about that fusion of everything mm -hmm. is just so uh, perfectly savory. I love how drippy and sloppy it is. It's just got the perfect consistency for me. The crispiness of the bun, the tenderness of the meat, uh, that cheese is top notch. Cheesy, beefy, a little bit of onion, pickle to help cut through the richness. The sauce is somewhat subtle, subtle but somewhat tangy. It's like a fast food burger but with much better ingredients. Oh my God, this, this is, is amazing. amazing. 
All right, where can people head to get so much more of your beautiful culinary wisdom? If you go to augustusranch.com, We've got a bunch more about our program. We've got recipes. I'll have a blog post up about how to assemble this burger with recipe instructions, things like that. Uh, so if you want to follow it step by step, you can do that. And if you use the code word Modern Rogue through the hey, month that, of that's October. That's the name of our show. That's the name of our that's show. Your show. That's, that's your show. Not Modern Rouge. Right, because there's oh, an no. OG. OG, yeah. yeah. Right, Modern Rogue. 10% off any purchase on our online butcher shop through the month of October. Hell okay? yes, so dude. You can order the exact cuts of meat that we uh, use for the burger and the grind today or order a steak or order, order some beef fat or yeah, anything. Done and done. Dude, Kent, you're the best person on the planet. Well, thank you guys for having me. I'm almost done. How baked into your daily routine is using NordVPN? It is all I ever do whenever I'm interacting with anything electronic. I keep checking like the ATMs, the pump at the gas station to make sure that my Nord is active. I liken it to washing your hands before and after you go to the bathroom. That's brilliant. Yes. yes. It's, it's a simple matter of, of, of privacy hygiene where it's just like, look, bad things happen to some people. Oftentimes, those are related to people who have not exercised good informational hygiene, and that's exactly what NordVPN makes possible. And it's totally painless, unlike most VPNs, where it slows everything down, where there's a bunch of things you can't access, where secretly they say that it's a VPN, but they're tracking you or whatever. They don't keep records of anything. You're not getting dirty, you're not getting filthy. As we've established, the internet will give you a disease. I'm not sure we established that, but I established, I thought we were on keep, the same keep, page. No, 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 you can get two years at 66% off. That's like $3.99 for month after month, just going anywhere you want on the internet. My favorite thing is when I log in and I look at the weather and it makes no sense. I was like, oh, that's right, Google. You, you don't, don't know, know where, where I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the overlords. I'm beneath their radar. I'm Plus tricking also, them. you get to see your usual websites from a different perspective. Because nowadays, everybody's got those targeted advertisements. And you're like, yes, I know. I play Overwatch. But instead, you get to Too experience close. as being generic citizen 2597. It's great. Yes, uh, that feeling of anonymity is also a feeling of safety. Go to nordvpn.com slash rogue with none of the pain. It is the fastest. VPN I've ever used. It's the best thing ever. $3.99 a month, 66% off when you commit to two years. NordVPN.com slash rogue. You thought about pickles while you put this together, didn't you? Yeah, if you guys I can, no, no. If you guys were to do it, it has, if you guys were to be like Jason, make a perfect burger, I'd be you'd be looking at my burger going, is that a gummy worm? What is <laughs> you know? And some car keys? What? <laughs> I don't even understand what's happening. Hot tamales? What's <laughs> yeah, going on? It's like